Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Beldina Kirito J, founder of Beldina's Delicacies and Bakery, where we bake cakes for all occasions and offer trainings on cake baking and decorations. So today, guys, I have a very special guest, my mentor in business, uh, Doreen Kiratemporo. She's going to tell us about her entrepreneurship journey. Uh, I'm so glad to have you here today, Doreen. Thank Karibu you, Belgium. Sana. Thank you. Uh, you can say something to our viewers. Hi, everyone. My name is Doreen Kirotemporo. I'm an entrepreneur, director, Don't Tech Limited. Um, Don't Tech deals with security items, fireproof safes, cameras, fire extinguishers, all security products. And also, I... I am a director at Zuri's Beauty Parlor, which is located along Gong Road at um, Sokosafi Mall. We do massage, we have a barber shop, we have a salon. So I'm so glad today to be here with Beldina. It's been a journey with her. We've walked through a journey and I hope to share that journey with you today. Thank you so much, Beldina. You're most welcome. So guys, we're in a different location today. We are shooting from Villa Serra, a villa holiday home in Malindi. So we came for vacation, my family and Doreen's family. So we thought, why not do a video uh, telling you about our entrepreneurship journeys? Um, because I know entrepreneurship is quite a challenge to most people. And we are demystifying and telling you, giving you those tips and hacks on how to make it in entrepreneurship. So guys, you can... Uh, just uh, see a quick overview of uh, the Villa Serra. It's a very good uh, holiday home for your families and your friends. Thank you so much, Villa Serra, for hosting us here. We are enjoying and really having fun. So, Doreen, now uh, you've been in, in entrepreneurship for quite a while. Yes. Would you mind telling us how you started? Uh, yeah, how did you start? So, my entrepreneurship journey started when I was in high school basically. My dad used to do those tenders. So most of the time I used to do them for him. We are, when we on break, feeling of the tenders. Yeah. And I really used to admire his work. I'm yeah. like, this dude is old and he's yeah. really hustling to mm -hmm. get the tenders. I, I can also do it. Yeah. But with him now, I realize those tenders, when I grew up, I realize those tenders are not easy to come by. Yeah. So, and I didn't want to be a full-time entrepreneur. Yes. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Yes. So, I moved the, the narration. Mm -hmm. Now, because I used to see my dad deal so much with safes. Mm -hmm. Like, he used to supply a lot of safes to government offices. Ah. So, I asked him one day, why can't we bring in the safes? Yes. So, when we bring in the safes, we'll be able to stock them, sell, and a supply yeah. even government will make more money than buying from someone and yeah. and supplying. Exactly. Now that's how I started Don't Take. Ah, wow. I actually started Don't Don't Take due to that issue that I used to see my dad buying from someone and yeah. selling. So I thought if you buy them, if you bring them from a manufacturer, yes. you'll get at a cheaper rate and you're going to increase your profits if you're going to supply to a client. And something else, you'll not only supply but you'll have a shop where you're going to sell them. Wow. So that's when now I started. But before I got now to the actual buying of safes from manufacturer, I did have a small, small business here and, and here and there. Okay. There's a, a time I even sold the scrap metal. Scrap metal? Yes. How? I used to like get... Those are the, the, I see those young men... Wale wana, wana kama uh, and then we buyer. Mimi so I used to buy and supply mm. to companies like Devki, mm. ASL, wow. in the River. Mm -hmm. You make a small margin, but I really used to enjoy it yeah. because I knew I was making my own money. Yes. And then I had become a parent. My kids were only like a few months old. Yeah. So I really needed to stabilize. You see, when you, you have kids at 24 years, yes. You really need to focus on and your life. And twins for that matter. And twins for that matter. Mm -hmm. So I started with a scrap. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think from there I realized I needed to do something better to better my life. So I dropped the scrap business. I didn't even go through any loss or anything. I just dropped it. 
So having a, a, an undergraduate in finance, mm -hmm. I wanted to do something that I am going to practice what I learned. Yeah. Actually, even if it's my own business, I'm going to do my accounting yeah, by exactly. myself, mm -hmm. my p &L, yeah. my profit loss, yeah. all that. Eh? So the company Don't Take Limited was registered. Then now I started doing supplies job with it before yeah. I could accumulate money now to bring a full container mm -hmm. of safes. Yeah. Also, oh, these safes, you had to import them. You had to import them. We mm -hmm. actually, even currently, we don't have someone who is manufacturing them locally, locally. in the country. Mm -hmm. You have to import them. From where? Probably there is someone watching and that they are interested in doing a similar business. Could you shed some light? Like, where do you import them from? I get my safes from Korea and a few others from Germany. Mm -hmm. So wow. you have to consolidate money because yeah. it's not Kidogo cash. Yeah. And being a 24 year old, it was very, very hard for me yeah. to get a few millions to, to bring those saves. Yes. So I had to seek finances. I had to seek my dad to, to help me import them. Yeah. And that's how I, I now brought in my first container. But before getting, years. but before bringing, getting, <laughs> twenty four years bringing in a container of saves, guys. Yeah, you see the kind of spirit that is out here. I, yani, these the empires are not just built from nowhere. They don't just come. You have to start somewhere. Yeah. But mm. the problem was not even bringing the saves. The problem was marketing. It was yeah. so hard for me to market because my friends, people I knew, were just 24 year old. Yeah. So asking a 24 year old to who is still living in their mother's house to buy a safe, to take where? It was so hard for me to get the market. I had to now get that out of marketing. I had to find ways of marketing it, distributing. Sometimes we'll even stay for a month without selling a safe because a safe is not something someone is going to buy for like 5,000 or 2,000 and it's not something you consume daily. Yeah. So actually once I, I sell a safe to you, whether to Memalizana and yeah, I will not come buying it. Again, it's not, I'll not, you'll not be it's a not repeat like, client. Yeah, it's, it's not, not like, like food. It's yeah. not like my kids. <laughs> it's not like your kids. Yeah. Mm. So uh, I really, Don't Tech has um, helped me grow in terms of marketing, it has given me resilience I never knew I would get. Yeah. It has made me realize everything is possible. Because when, when you start something, you have to get it through the end for you to realize some impact. Exactly. For example, when I brought those safes, they were not going to stay there for years. You have to sell them, make some money, pay debts because yeah. Most ent entrepreneurs are highly borrowed, like mm -hmm. they have debts. Yeah, I talk about debts. I totally, I can relate, I can relate. Yeah. <laughs> entrepreneurs are highly borrowed. Yeah. So my entrepreneurship journey has been about, uh, don't take, it's the one that has given me character development over and over again, over and like I have done it by, by character development, I believe you mean challenges. So could, yes. you, could you mind telling our viewers what are some of these challenges? Because all we see is glamour, all we see is don't take with a lot of saves when you visit your office at NHF, we find mama saves in my to everywhere, everywhere we see success. So could you kindly do you mind telling our viewers what are some of these challenges that you've come across? Um challenges in entrepreneurship are many. One, I almost got auctioned once. That was my main, main challenge. I almost got auctioned because my saves were not moving, clients were not paying. I had rent arrears. Yes, and now... The, well, which year was this? In uh, 2015. Mm -hmm. And uh, the rent arrears had accumulated to how much? 1.2. Yes. And now my landlord decided now I, I need to sell you safes to get my money back. And of and course you see, a throwaway price. Of course, a safe you sell at around 120,000. The guy wants to sell at 10,000. And you cannot tell him not to do it. You owe him money. 
And remember, you also owe the bank money for the yeah. for that particular stock. You get it? It's a cycle. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those are the challenges now. Mm -hmm. If I had given up, mm -hmm. I would have lost Dontek at that yeah. point. Mm -hmm. I would have lost my stock, my hard work. You see? My yeah. hard work for around four or five years. Mm -hmm. I would have lost it. But you don't wait until, like you auctioned now for you to take actions now you start looking now for someone who can bail you out yeah maybe an investor yes. or you look for someone who can give you some money you have yeah. friends who can mm -hmm. give you some money mm -hmm. to bail you out of the situation mm -hmm. and something else you have you can do in such a situation just sit down with the person you owe money yeah. sit them down mm -hmm. tell them i owe you this and this amount mm -hmm. can we talk about it how can i pay you give me more time to pay the money mm -hmm. and i'm sure if you keep your promise and your explanation is genuine that person is going to mm -hmm. understand Actually, you you know what let me cut you short that i remember when we opened our hotel lab um, the story is in my channel earlier and of course we are heavily in debt and all that do you know that advice you gave uh, doreen gave me this kind of advice i took it i've been consistently talking to my um, debtors and uh, creditors sorry you tell the creditor yes you, the due date is today to pay off a loan i am sorry i am not in a position to yes. pay this is the situation could you kindly bear with me as i sort myself out actually that is a, a that is something that has really helped me personally uh, it has that advice has helped me deal with the creditors that we owe but that um due to the loss of the hotel guys these tips are very important let's learn i'm i'm enjoying this some of the things some things we share every day but some things actually i'm hearing them you say them for the first time yes yeah and i'm also learning so uh, that is one of the challenges that i've faced and also now lack of capital at some point i could not bring in uh, enough stock yeah because yeah, people buy on debts. You have organizations who, are, who owe you a few millions. You're yeah. not every time you ask them, they tell you we'll pay, we'll pay, mm -hmm. and yet you need to stock. Yeah. You have most. Yeah, you need to have more stock yes. for your regular clients. Yeah. You know, you have those clients mm -hmm. who supply to other places, so yeah. they buy from us. If you don't have, you're losing that client. Yeah. Yet there's an organization that owes you a couple of millions. Yes. So that has really been an issue and you know very well when you below when you don't have any security it's hard for a bank to give you money exactly i know that i can totally relate so it that was the second challenge that has really messed me up so the other challenge that i've experienced in my journey of entrepreneurship is um lack of capital you see entrepreneurship in in this journey you depend on what you make to make a living for yourself. Yes. So sometimes you might realize you do not have enough money to buy for your stock and do a few personal things. Yeah. So when you go to the banks, you're not able to get money because one, they really fear entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And being an entrepreneur, maybe you've not accumulated enough money to get, yeah. uh, to get uh, collateral. Yeah. Security. Collateral, yeah, security. Mm -hmm. Yes. So here, is an organization that owes you money. Here is your shop or your premises that needs stock and you don't have money. You have those regular clients that come to you to buy stock to supply to other places, yeah. but how na stock? So that has been a, a really big challenge because with now what I do, you're not able to buy stock in small bits. Yeah, yeah. It becomes like very that. expensive. Yeah. So if you could zap, you're not able to sell yeah. if you do those small, small bits. Yeah. That's one of the challenges that has really, it's a challenge that has really affected my business. And have you found a solution for the same? I'm still looking for one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so guys, viewers, if you know a solution, if you know a financier, who can, Dorina Kimwambia, I want to import a container of saves. They are ready to finance. Please leave a comment. Hey, we on Ataka Sana. Yes. And then now, when I, those days when I started Don't Take, I didn't put structures in place like structures like you have a whole process yeah. of how you do your things yes. it's like you do it yeah. so with time processes catch up with you yeah. 
like you have to you realize um it's you're just getting money from one hand yeah. one pocket to the other mm-hmm. una unatoa pesa ya biashara ile unanua chumvi yeah. unatoa kesho unaenda holiday mm-hmm. you get it yeah, i didn't no start this i had record keeping yes mm-hmm. you know there's there's a difference between having structures having yes. processes and doing record keeping yeah so personally i didn't have those mm-hmm. i had record i knew is safe to meuza mm-hmm. this is the profit it to meuza this is the profit mm-hmm. but you see no you're not able to allocate money to yourself yeah. and to the business mm-hmm. you know there's a difference between you as yeah. beldina yeah. and beldina delicacies yes. those are two different entities yeah. So I didn't have I didn't have those I didn't have the structures until few like 2 3 years ago. Yes. That's when now I started putting the processes. Mm-hmm. Now teaching an, an old dog new treats mm-hmm. is a problem. It's a big problem. I've, you know there's problems of yeah. staffing started. Yes. Because you want to tell the staff this mm-hmm. is the processes I want it's us to start it's following. It's, yeah. mm-hmm. And now they are used to the customer mengia menua safe eka pesa kwa account chukua receipt amenda and then they call and during to lipia transport you get it i'm like now we have an accountant yes. things have to go through yeah. this process exactly. no it was very hard now for my staff to relate yeah. like tumekuwa tukifanya hivi what are we doing mm-hmm. you get it the way when you change something in your organization wanakuambianga hapana tunafanyanga hivi now that is the other challenge i had yeah. The next challenge is my marketing people I've had issues with my way staffing for marketing. Mm-hmm. When you get when you want serious marketing people you have to give them a retainer. Yeah. You give them a retainer. Month 1, month 2, month 3, mtu ana disappear. So you've been Not paying bring in any money. You've been the, paying uh, this person for 3 months yeah. na hajaleta anything. Yeah, sure, yeah. So this person it's like they have stolen from the organization. Yeah. And the third month when someone tells you I am resigning mm. there's nothing you can do. Yeah. You have to let them go. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, that became the trend until mm. I decided I will do my own marketing. Yeah. Ukifanya marketing yako mm. if it gets a point you get tired. Yeah. So those are the challenges that the major challenges that I've faced. Mm. Mm. Guys, now you see entrepreneurship it's not all blow and actually The, the stories that I will be bringing you it's a, it to show you their challenges in uh, entrepreneurship but we somehow have to find a way of overcoming them and uh deal with it uh dealing with it so Doreen could you or do you mind us uh, do you mind telling us like what are you uh, share with us amidst all these challenges their success stories there is something there is those aha moments Mm. that keeps you moving despite the challenges and all that what keeps you moving in this entrepreneurship journey um the fact that i started being an entrepreneur in uh, around 2010 yeah. and i'm still alive uh, and and uh, i have not stopped it yeah. means it is working exactly and if it was not working i i could be employed yeah. by now yeah sure If it was not working I could I couldn't be here by now yeah. but now it's working that is what keeps me moving and the fact that now my business has moved now from Dentec and we have a new baby on the mm-hmm. block yeah. we have Zuri Starch yes now Zuri Starch beauty parlor is a baby from Dentec okay. Limited yeah so it shows things are really working it exactly. shows with patience there is growth, there is growth. Yeah. yes and uh, you also uh, didn't mention the bit of uh, apart from uh, having saves at uh, Dante there are also CCTV cameras yes yes that's another growth the now, security system yes now what happened i started selling saves as what my dad as per what my dad was doing yeah. so with time i realized that ah, this guy is only doing saves for organizations yeah why can't i buy Sto- start stocking for homes yeah so i started stocking for homes now the small ones yeah. any anyone who has a budget of 15000 yeah. can get a safe from me ah, nice. now with time you realize these clients i sold safe to will not come back for another safe yeah so now i i started including other security products yeah i went to cctv cameras mm-hmm. so i got clients for cameras then i went to fire extinguishers I went to lots for the doors. Yeah. 
I went to smoke detectors, mm -hmm. all those. Yeah. Now I kept every year, I will give myself a target. This yeah. year, I'm adding a product to Don't Take. So every year, I will add a product. Mm -hmm. Every year, I will add a product. So it got to a point where now Don't Take started doing security products. Not only safes, because we were known with safes. Yeah. Not only safes, but we started doing other security products. Mm, yes. Nice, that's awesome. Mm. Now, during talking about marketing, I remember uh, one time you telling me how you could wake up at 4 a.m. or is it 3 a.m.? And by 7 you're in Mary and did you go to how many schools knocking door to door uh, looking for the market for CCTVs? Could you kindly tell us more about it? Um, when I introduced the CCTV product now in my Don't Take line, I realized I had to do something different from what other suppliers were doing because they used to move door to door in these houses looking for market. And now I, I, I started marketing, I had a specific target location for marketing. Like I picked, I'm going to do Meru County, Tharakanithi, Embu and all that. So I used to leave my house now because I want to see my kids the previous night. Yeah. I would wake up at around 4 a.m., leave the house at 4.30, so that by 7.30, maximum 8, I've started visiting those schools. Before now, the principals or the ones in charge, ones in Kuchoka, by around 2, I'll have visited around 5 schools. Wow. So I leave the house at 4, I'm in Meru, if it's Meru, I'm in Meru by 7.30, and I have a list of the target clients. So I will walk from one to the other until now around three or four. Once I'm done, Narudi, Nairobi. You see now from those five clients you visited, you will not miss one that will give you work. So entrepreneurship, if you sleep, you will lose a lot. So putting in the hard work. You, you have, have to put yes, in the hard work. You have to put in the hard yourself. work because it is not for long. You're not doing it for long. Forever, it's a yeah. sacrifice. Yes. I know people leave work. Yeah. Thinking entrepreneurship is a smooth journey, mm -hmm. but it's not. You end up working even exactly. 23 hours exactly. a day. Yeah. Exactly. You leave your 8 to 5 work, mm -hmm. but when you start being an entrepreneur, now you work 24 oh, hours. Throughout, yeah. Yes, and you know it's, it's a brand you're building for yourself. This is your effort. At the end of the month, your pay slip will be determined, determined by how much work you put in during the month. It's not a constant pay slip like people who are employed, yeah. like I'm being paid 100,000. It's 100,000 every month. No, entrepreneurship, this month, you might go home with 2,000. Mm -hmm. The next month, you go home with 200,000. The other month, you take away 100K. Or even a loss. Or even a loss. Negative yes. 500,000. There's a negative 500,000 yes. somewhere. Yeah. So you really have to work for you to be able to earn a decent salary in entrepreneurship. Yeah. It's not easy, but it's rewarding. Yeah. When you start it, it's very rewarding. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much. I'm loving, I'm loving the nuggets of wisdom. Now, um, could you tell us what are values, what values are keep, uh, are keep pushing you or are keep you moving, keep you succeeding and all that? What values do you carry in your entrepreneurship journey? Um, something I like is seeing my clients happy. So when I deliver that safe, you're happy, you tell me, hey Doreen, you have sorted me, my documents are safe. Or when I do that, I, I do the installation for the cameras, my client is happy, I'm no longer worried about thieves or things disappearing from my house. It keeps me going. I look forward to those, I look forward to those positive comments mm -hmm. from my client. Something else, money. Yeah. We all want to live a good life. We all want money, even if some will not say it outrightly. Yeah. But we all need that money. Exactly. So for money, you to good, lives are not money. yes, for you yeah. to live a good life, for you to maintain your lifestyle, yeah. you have to work for it. Exactly. And the third thing is my future, yeah. like my retirement. Mm -hmm. I need to work around it. I want when I get to my fifties, I retire peacefully with money that is going to sustain me for the rest of the time that I'm going to be and not struggle then. Yeah. So I'll rather struggle yeah. in my 20s and 30s yes. so that in my 60s, yeah, I'm going to be relaxed. Yeah, yes. relaxed. Wow. Mm. That is awesome. You're actually talking about happiness and um, 
having seen your clients actually like me when you when i take that uh, wedding cake or even uh the birthday cakes and i like, see people all of us celebrating very happy there those moments there's some are fulfillment really yes yes you even see their end you smile you forget all the troubles and worries yes. and that smile yes yeah i totally feel you so that is what really really drives me ah awesome and you see you don't want to fail exactly. something else people are looking up to you yeah. they just see dorin one on a good entrepreneur yes. so you really want to make it exactly. you want other people who are looking up to you mm-hmm. to see that yeah it's doable it's doable yes. it's doable yes it's a, it's a struggle yeah. but it's doable mm-hmm. Mm. Mm, awesome thank you so much now what are your parting shots um my parting shot if you want to be an entrepreneur if you want to join this journey start somewhere first of all you have to start down and something else it's not given that your first business will pick up and the best business you can do is to solve a client's problem once you solve the client's problem even now the story of price now yeah. just disappears yeah. that client is happy and will pay you whatever amount they they want to you want to be paid because you have solved their problem exactly. secondly it's a journey it's a journey that needs resilience persevere consist- consistency you have to be always you have to be always there to market your product it doesn't matter whether you have a like you have someone commenting just market someone somewhere is watching and they are saying when i get money i'll get a cake from beldina so you have to keep marketing your product mm-hmm. and the earlier you start the better, the better for you yeah, sure so mm-hmm. start early by the time you get to our age you're doing better than some of us yeah and even if you are our age or even older it's never too late to start yes right? it's never too late yeah, to start, start at any age. it's never too late to start yeah. you can start at any age but start with something that if you you know even if you sleep someone wakes you up you can be able to tell them how the process goes if it's a problem how it's solved yani yeah, something you really love enjoying so that you don't feel like you're being punished to wake up in the morning yeah. go to your business you have to enjoy it. Mm, thank you so much Doreen. I'm sure guys you've learned. So please leave a word of appreciation for Doreen for sharing with us about her entrepreneurship journey. Like, comment, watch uh, watch all our videos, uh, share with all your friends and let's keep sharing. Besides cooking and uh, baking videos, I will be bringing you more and more stories on entrepreneurship to show you it's doable it's positive challenges are there yes but there are solutions to those challenges and there is a success after all that so guys thank you so much for watching till next time see you bye bye Adios.